These are four gold medals from the 1964 Olympics. All of them were awarded to one of these young men. What is your name, please? My name is Don Scholander. My name is Don Scholander. My name is Don Scholander. Only one of these young men is the real Don Scholander. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, and Kitty Carlisle. On to tell the truth, and here sitting in for Bud Collier is our host, Robert Q. Lewis. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you, Johnny. Welcome, welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. Good evening, panel. Good evening. Nice hey, to Bob. see you all. Bud's taking the evening off, and we'll be back with you next Monday night. And incidentally, I've got to tell you how much I enjoyed you all last week on Secret. I've got a secret. You were terrific. <laughs> <laughs> did you, uh, hey, what? Tom, uh, uh, what did she do to you? She... <laughs> I gave him a good shot in the head. <laughs> <laughs> it was a real zet, I'm telling you. <laughs> she stopped my face with her hand. <laughs> and Kitty, I must say, you are an expert on refrigerators. <laughs> Other people's. Other people's refrigerator. <laughs> well, anyway, tonight we are brought to you through the good graces of Winston Filter Cigarettes. And now, are we set to go? Mm. Panel, would you please open your envelope, follow along as I read. I, Don Scholander, am a swimmer. In 1964, I was elected Sportsman of the Year by United Press International and Athlete of the Year by the Associated Press. The high point of my career, however, came last summer in Tokyo, when I became the only swimmer in history to win four gold medals in one Olympics. Signed, Don Scholander. <laughs> There they are, panel. Three young men. They all claim to be Don Scholander, the winner of four Olympic gold medals. Let's start this round with Kitty Carlisle. Thank you. It's a pleasure to look at you, and thank you for doing our country so very proud. Uh, number two, what sort of uh, strokes did you use? I am primarily a freestyler. What does that mean? That means I swim the cross stroke. Uh, number three, does a freestyler mean you can swim any way you want to? Uh, well, you could, basically, I guess. So, like I do, kind of everything all mixed up? You could, as, you, as long as you stick to one stroke. Thank you. Ah, uh, I see. Uh, number one, uh, can you tell me of other Olympic winners uh, for America during the Olympics in Tokyo? What do you mean? Well, I mean, did any, uh, what other Americans won for our country? Oh, what did they many win in? In, the, in swimming? No, no, in other fields. Oh, the four? Well, there's a question that just can't be answered at this point. Thank you, Kitty. Let's get to Tom Poston. Tommy? Uh, thank you, uh, Bob. Number three, <laughs> when did you win that Associated Press uh, Award? About two weeks ago. Yeah, it was very recently, I know. Uh, number two, who won the Athlete of the Decade at that particular award ceremony? Do you remember? The Athlete of the Decade was Rayford Johnson. Uh, thank you. Number one, uh, do you know whether A.J. Foyt was considered for Athlete of the Year at that particular Associated Press luncheon or affair? I don't think that... I, he might have been considered. I don't think he was in one of the top finalists. No, who, was, who came in second? Number one? Thank you. Uh, there you go. Now, Peg. Number one, where are you from? Well, originally I come from uh, Lake Oahu in Oregon. But well, wait, I, I see. And number two, where are you from? Lake Oswego, Oregon. Oh, you're all from Lake Oswego, Oregon. But number, number, three, number two, there was a girl swimmer that won a gold medal, and her first name was Donna. What was her last name? Number two. Oh, excuse me, Donna DeVarana. Thank you. Uh, number three, do you swim 500 meters? No, only 400 meters. Oh. <laughs> uh, number one, what sport was Rayford Johnson the best in? Rayford Johnson? Yes. Try. Uh, but number three, what did he win his Olympic medal in? Decathlon. Thank you. Thank you, Peg. Now, let's turn to Arson Bean. Well, it breaks my heart because I'm a well-known athlete and have a million swimming questions, but I have to disqualify myself. Oh. All right. <laughs> well, since Orson disqualifies himself, that will count as an incorrect vote, my friend. So you've already won $250. The time now has come to vote. 
So will you, without consultation, please mark your ballots, panel, selecting either number one, number two, or number three. Of course, the team of challengers receives $250 for each incorrect vote. Are you all set? By golly, it looks that way. Tom, you ready? Yes, I am. Good. Let's uh, start with you. For whom did you I vote? I voted for number three. Uh, the athlete of the decade at that particular affair was our own beloved and multi-talented Mickey Mantle. And, uh... Oh. Uh, oh. I'm sorry. If she were closer, she'd give me a sock in her face that I'd like to Peggy? Oh. See, I believed it was Ray for Johnson, so naturally, I voted for the... And besides, number two, he knew that girl's last name, and she's real cute, and if I'd been swimming over there, I would have known her last name, if I were a boy. <laughs> Orson, what have you got there? Oh, a disqualification. Yes, that does mean dollar. Sure All right, so. now, Kitty. <laughs> well, I voted for number two because I thought when he stood up there, he had the broadest shoulders and a very direct look, and I think swimmers have lot, very broad shoulders, and I thought it was Mr. Johnson, too. Well, he should. He deserves it. Well, there you go. The votes are in. They've made up their minds. I wonder how you at home agree. At any rate, let's find out right now. Which of these three gentlemen is the real winner of four Olympic gold medals? This is the part I like best. Will the real Don Scholander please stand up? Uh -huh. Bravo. Bravo. Bravo indeed, Don. A job very well done. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Now let's find out who these other fellows are. Number one, would you tell us who you are and what you do? I'm John Farrow and I attend New York University. Thank you, John. <laughs> Number two, you uh, got yourself uh, two votes there. Let's find out about who, uh, who you are. My name is Steve Lathrop and I'm a freshman at Yale University. Orson, why did you have to disqualify yourself? Well, I know John Farrow on the left there because his, his dad was one of the great directors of all time in Hollywood. His mother is Maureen O'Sullivan, and his sister is the lovely Mia Farrow on Peyton Place. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I'm practically a brother because I played Maureen's son. I was his mother's son for two years. And Makes you a, a, a brother by theater, yes. kind of. Well, fellas, thank you very much. As you see, you have done better than I'm sure you wildly imagine. Uh, there are a total of, well, with the disqualification, three incorrect votes, which wins for all of you a total of $750. Thank you very much. It's been good being with you, and good night. As you may know, ladies and gentlemen, Don Scholander is an amateur athlete. Don cannot accept prize money, and therefore, uh, the show has made arrangements to send one-third of the team's winnings to the Olympic Development Fund. <laughs> and now, before we continue, let's take time out for a brief film. We'll be back in a minute. Let's see how we do now. Here comes our next team of challengers. is your name, please? My name is Snooks Rourke. <laughs> My name is Snooks Rourke. My name is Snooks Rourke. All right, panel, would you please listen while I read? I, Snooks Rourke, am a professional horseshoer. I have been working at my trade for four years. Since I travel about my 100 square mile territory in a Jeep loaded with horseshoes, nails, hammers, and an anvil, I can provide my 50 regular customers with convenient uh, horse-to-horse -horse service. <laughs> Signed, Snooks Rourke. Panel. Here are three very attractive young ladies. They all claim to be Snooks Rourke, a professional horse shoer. Let's start this uh, round with um, Horse and Bean. Horse oh, and Bean? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> How do you spell that? Uh, how are you, Snooks? <laughs> Snooks number one. Uh, how do you hold a horse when you're sticking a shoe on him? Well, I usually put his leg between my legs. <laughs> 
Yes, and which direction do you face in? Which direction do I face in? Yeah. I face the way the horse is facing. You do. Number, uh, oh, that makes it tricky, doesn't it? Number three, yeah. Just trying to picture it. Do you face the way the horse is facing? No, sir. No, I didn't think so. Bless you there. Number two, uh, how do you carry an anvil? A mere slip of a girl like you, Snooks. How do you carry an anvil around there? I don't carry it. It's mounted on the back of my Jeep. Oh, it's just... <laughs> I don't know, Aunt Horsa, she's got her anvil chorus to help. Now we turn to Kitty. Number three, where do you ply your horse to horse service? All over. But where? It says a hundred mile uh, square area. In Florida. Uh, you, number two, where do you ply yours? Saratoga Springs, New York. Ah, uh, number one, what diseases are horses' hooves subject to? His hooves? Yeah. Uh, the frog gets a disease and it makes him go lame. Uh, what is thrush, number two? That's the disease of the frog. The frog? Yes. Ah, I thought it was the horse. <laughs> Thank you, Kitty. Well, that's the horse. Tom posted that. That's the frog. Thank you, Bob. Horse, Number three, yeah. can you ever, uh, uh, do you have a, as, uh, me, you may not be able to do it, but did you ever ha hear of patching a horse's hoof? No, sir. Number one, did you? No. Number two? No. You ever heard of patching a horse's hoof? No, never have. <laughs> It happens. Uh, number two, uh, do you, what are cut nails? Nails that are cut. <laughs> number three, do you have occasion to use them? No, sir. I don't number, know what they are. Number one, do you use cut nails? Sorry, Todd. Peggy. Number two, what's a horse's frog? <laughs> Wait a minute. Well, they said that the thrush was the frog or something. That is the soft part underneath the horse's hoof. Is the frog. Is the frog. Oh, well, now I know something. Number three, do you use different weights of horseshoes? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, number three, when you, uh, do, you use, do you work mostly on farm animals or race horses? On neither. Neither what one? What kind of horses do you use? Just pleasure horses and... Oh, I see. Num number two, what's a Percheron? It's a type of horse. Number one, what does a Percheron look like? Number one? Number one, yes. It's a very heavy workhorse. Thank you. Uh, number Oh, boy, there yeah, you go. Yeah. Yes, they were good. Time to vote, though, now, without consultation, please, mm -hmm. panel, and mark your ballots, if you will, selecting either yeah. number one, number two, or number three. I must agree with you, they are very, very good. Are we all set? No. No? All right. Come on, Kit. All right, let's start then again with Tom. Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, I would like to check uh, with... Uh, uh, number one again about which direction she faces when she shoes a horse. <laughs> but on account of that, I voted for number three because she seemed to know a little bit more about. The horse All right, shoe. Peggy. Well, I voted for number one. I thought it made sense to face the same way and look up and talk to him. If you looked up, you wouldn't be talking to him. <laughs> I, I, I'm really torn between uh, numbers two and three. I never heard of patching a horse's hooves. You must know some cheap farmers, Tom. Right? <laughs> I voted for number two. Number one looks like a horseshoe, but number two has a certain... Uh, ah, I should have voted for three. I just thought of... Uh, anyway. <laughs> Kitty? Well, I voted for number three. I don't approve of facing the same way either if you're shoeing a horse because it seems to me you couldn't see what was going on behind you. And uh, that's important. And number two knew a lot about the soft part of the horse's hoof, but I voted for number three because when she said it was just pleasure horses, it seemed to me like she talked about she knew she knew her job. All right, there you go. There's some more votes, widely scattered this time. Let's find out now uh, which of these three young ladies is the real professional horseshoer. Will our real Snooks Rourke please stand up? Uh, uh, Yes. Thank you, Snooks. You may sit down again. You're, uh, you're the prettiest horseshoer I think I've ever seen. Let's find out about the other young ladies now. Number one, would you tell us who you are and what you do? Uh, my name is Athleen Ellington, and I'm a medical secretary. Thank you. Number two, let's find out about you. My name is Pamela Johnston, and I do promotional work for St. Martin's Press Publishers. Very good, indeed. 
Can I ask a question? Number three, which way do you face when you're shoeing a horse? Towards his rear end. <laughs> well, you ask a question, and boy, do you get an answer. <laughs> well, as you see, there have been two incorrect votes, which means a total of $500, ladies. Thank you so much. Good night. about the protection of your floor. Let's see what happens now. This is a fascinating one tonight. Here's our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Eberhard Fuchs. My name is Eberhard Fuchs. My name is Eberhard Fuchs. Panel, would you listen, please, as I read this fascinating story? I, Eberhard Fuchs, live in West Berlin, Germany. I am a member of the group of 35 people responsible for the longest escape tunnel yet built under the hated wall which divides our city. Working in teams night and day for six months, we dug down through the cellar of a bakery in West Berlin, under the 12-foot wall, under three manned communist bunkers, and under a 20-yard strip of plowed ground where the slightest sound could have meant death. Finally, we broke through under a shack in the courtyard of an apartment building in East Berlin. The finished tunnel was approximately two feet wide and two and a half feet high. Those who escaped could take nothing with them but the clothes they wore and had to crawl the 150 yards in bare feet. Before the East Berlin police detected the operation, a record 57 men, women, and children had made it through our tunnel to West Berlin and freedom. Signed, Eberhard Fuchs. Three gentlemen, they all claim to be Eberhard Fuchs, a most amazing young man who helped build a tunnel under the Berlin Wall. Let's start this round with Tom Poston. Oh, thank you, Bob. Number two, what did the cops do when they found, what did the police do when they found the tunnel? Uh, the Eastern German police, uh, the Bopos, built another wall under the wall in the tunnel. Right in the tunnel? Right in the tunnel. Number three, did they capture any of the members of the tunnel team? No, sir, they didn't. Thank God. Number one, were you doing this with the, uh, uh, with the consent of the West Berlin authorities? No, nobody knew anything. Uh, number two, why, did you, why were the people helping them come up out of the tunnel, why were they bare-chested? Excuse me, I didn't understand. They had no shirt on in a <clears throat> piece of film I saw about the man who was helping the people escaping. He didn't have any shirt on it. Why was that? Because they had been working hard. It wasn't cold? No. Thank you, Tom. Peggy Cass. Number three, where did you put the dirt? The dirt was put into another room in back of the, in the basement. I see. Number two, what's a Vopo? A Vopo is a Fox politist. Thank you. Number one, when you go through Checkpoint Charlie, how, have you ever been through Checkpoint Charlie? Checkpoint Charlie's in Berlin, yes. yeah. Uh, how many booths, how many uh, people do you have to give your passport to before you go into East Berlin? I can't go through Checkpoint Charlie because I'm a German. Oh, so you never went. See, that's the one thing I know about Berlin, and there you are. Uh, number three, uh, are you a student? No. Oh. Number two, with the, the, these 35 people, that's a lot of people to share a secret. It's a lot of it's a, yeah, it's a lot of work. <laughs> Thank you, Peg. Orson Bean. Number one, in your opinion, was there a, uh, a rat? Did someone tip off the, the Volpos? I think so, yeah. Do you, number one, think it was one of your group? No, I don't think. Number three, uh, I remember the story. Now, what part did a phone booth play in it? Do you know? There was no phone booth. Number two? No. Number two, uh, were there, uh, what, what illumination did you have in the tunnel? What uh, illumination? What do you mean? What did you have for light as you, uh, in the tunnel? Um, we had, uh, we had um, sta Starkstrom burning uh, this. Starkhorns, yes. Starkhorns. Number one, what did you have? What? <laughs> Let's move along. Kitty, you I too turn. remember this extraordinary story. And number three, it seems to me that people came out in a kind of swing. Was yes. a swing used yes, there at was. the end? Yes, there was. Why was that? Well, the shaft went down 11 meters and uh, straight down, and that was the only way we could get, get them up. up. I see. Number two, how were these people chosen? Who the, decided who was to escape? Uh, the most of them had been relatives of uh, the crew. 
Thank you. Number one, how long did they know about this before they got into the tunnel? Uh, just one day. One day? Yeah. And they left with nothing? Thank you, Kitty. Thank you, Kitty. Again, uh, they're excellent, aren't they? It's time again to vote. Please mark your ballots, if you will, without consultation for either number one, number two, or number three. I don't know how you're going to mark this one. Boy. Well briefed. Are we all set? Kitty, have you marked? All right. There she goes. All right, Tom, may I have your vote, please? I voted for number three. Re really, I, I wasn't familiar enough with the story to know whether he was, uh, Orson was, was legitimate about his uh, telephone or whether he was using a wine spar device. But, but number three <laughs> said... for life. <laughs> number three said, there was no phone, and that's it. All right, Peggy. Well, I voted for number two because all the time people were answering, his brow was furrowed as though he wanted to be sure it was the right answer. Also, he knows who the vocals are. And they're not so hot, so... <laughs> Arthur? I voted for number one. I think he's a uh, kind of a wiry fellow that <laughs> could crawl in and out lugging bags of dirt. All right, Kitty. I voted for number two. It was a very tough decision, and it could have been any one of the three. Well, whoever it is, and I don't know either, I congratulate him. There are the votes. How do they agree with what you've tallied at home? It's always interesting to see that. Well, let's find out which of these gentlemen is uh, the fellow who helped build a tunnel under that Berlin Wall. Well, the real Eberhard Fuchs. Please, stand up. Hi. I thought so. I thought so. so. Please sit down, Eberhard. I think, uh, I think everybody in the free world owes you and your confrères a vote of deep thanks and appreciation. It took a lot of courage and congratulations. <laughs> Boy, did you guys, you fellas really fooled them though. Good for you. Let's find out who number two is. You got two votes. Who are you, sir? Uh, my name is John Kleislana and I'm an art student here in New York. Right here in New York. Good. All right, now, number three, would you tell us who you are, sir? My name is Peter W. Clake and I'm employed by Mercedes-Benz automobile manufacturers. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. May I ask you a question, number three? I'm sorry, I, I, you, your first name is? Peter. Peter, were you kind of adding a little bit to your accent? Well, I, I've been living in New York City for 10 years, and it was a little bit hard, but <laughs> I, I tried thought, it. <laughs> I thought, you did a beautiful job, thank you. And incidentally, once again, Ava, thank you so much. Well, by golly, look at the money you've won there, huh? Uh, uh, let me see, there are three incorrect votes, and if my mathematics is correct, mathematics is correct? Yes. Good. Depends no. on what kind of math you're using. <laughs> if my addition is right, these fellas have won for themselves $750. Congratulations. Thank you so much for being with us. Good night. Well, that was really a, a fascinating story, wasn't it? Well, we'll be back in just a moment, but first, a word of interest now about a new nasal spray. Pointed out, panel, that Mr. Fuchs, Eberhard Fuchs, is a journalist and photographer in West Berlin and took all the pictures of the tunnel we showed you at the outset. Now then, I think that's about it. Our time is up. I've enjoyed being with you. It's been great fun. Bud will be back next Monday night. Good night for our friends at Winston. And until next Monday night, then, for Bud Collier, this is Robert Q. Lewis reminding you to tell the truth. To tell the truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Cotman production. Stay tuned for fine fun as Peter Lawford faces Steve Allen's secret guesses on I've Got a Secret, next on CBS. <laughs> to tell the truth has been brought to you by Tempo Filter Cigarettes. For taste too good to miss, Tempo. This is Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, the program is recorded.